So when you try and back up and price in the idea of stimulus here, uh, how optimistic are you that we're going to see a deal come through before that Tuesday deadline? Yeah, and here's, I think, what I've been really happy to see is the markets have continued to do well, even with all of this stimulus kind of stalemate that's been happening over the last several weeks. And the good news is with the stimulus that's already come in, I mean, that's about five times the amount that's come in in the 2008 recession. And that's been holding things up really nicely here. And it's put people and companies in a good position to kind of wait through some of the arguments we're seeing on Capitol Hill right now. So any deal that comes through, I think, is undoubtedly going to be a positive for the markets here. Um, I would love to see that happen by Tuesday. But even if it doesn't, I think the chances of that coming through over the next month here, especially even if it's not till post-election when some of the political uncertainty passes and hopefully they can come to an agreement, I think we'll likely see something here relatively soon. And that will undoubtedly be a great thing and additional money to go into the markets. Uh, so, I mean, when you think about it, do you see a more negative uh, moves here if, if we don't get a deal? Or do you think right now investors are already bracing for that? I would agree with you. I think investors are kind of embracing for this not to happen at this point. I think there's just been so much arguments. I don't really think we see a lot of um, end in sight. I think Tuesday would be wonderful. But yeah, I think people are more pessimistic about that. Um, but I think regardless, we're going to see that be a positive at the end of the day. And we just want to see that the markets are holding up here regardless of that. So could we see volatility if there's news that there's nothing by Tuesday? Sure. I mean, that's what the markets are always going to do. But these are short term blips. Even last time when that news came out, markets are still higher. And so any dips that happen, if you have extra cash on the sidelines, these are wonderful opportunities. And as we lead up to the election, whether it's stimulus talks or just general political uncertainty, these are going to be great buying opportunities. So you just need to look at this opportunistically, not anything to be worried about the drop happening preemptively, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, uh, until then, I think a lot of people are in agreement on that front that it'll be after the election that you see something come through. And until then, we have earnings season uh, to keep us occupied here. And we are seeing more names come in uh, just in Q3 performance here. And we think about companies beating expectations. Refinitiv has uh, the numbers in terms of companies reporting earnings. And so far, 22.7% reporting uh, and beating expectations. That compares to the long run, uh, that compares to the long run average, of about 3.5% or 8.7% over the prior four quarters. So clearly, uh, Courtney, when we're looking at reports so far above analyst expectations, we got some big names coming out this week in IBM, Netflix, Tesla, AT&T, Coca-Cola, among others. So what are your expectations as we move uh, farther along here in earnings season? I would not be surprised if we continue to see this trend happening where companies are beating their expectations. And it's really just showing how resilient co companies and consumers have actually been through this volatility that we've seen and through this recession a lot faster than anybody expected. And it's not even just earnings. We just saw retail numbers come out on Friday, which well more than ex exceeded expectations. We thought we were going to see a growth rate of about 0.7% in retail sales, and it come in at 1.9%, so more than double. And that's showing that it's not just companies' earnings are beating expectations, but also consumers are still spending. And I think that both of those things together are going to lead to a really good third quarter looking back, but also optimistically as we look forward to next quarter, I think we'll probably see that trend continue. There are pieces of the economy that have held up, even as we saw kind of the stimulus roll off uh, with the CARES Act. Um, when you look at sectors right now positioning for maybe next year or even through the end of this year, where are you seeing strength and what are you telling uh, clients here in terms of maybe rebalancing portfolios heading into year end? You definitely want to look at some of your beaten down sectors. Um, certain things like your value companies, your small caps are still underperforming the markets, although they are getting a boost here. Um, you also want to make sure you have things that, to your point, are actually holding up well because of this. So, for example, the housing market has actually been booming right now with interest rates being so low. The thought is that can actually continue here as interest rates are probably going to stay low for a while longer. And we have a lot of political uncertainty right now, but one thing that really both sides want to get through is some sort of infrastructure bill. So anything that has to do with infrastructure spending is probably a good idea to have as part of your portfolio to make sure that regardless of what's happening on Capitol Hill, um, that actually should be a sector that benefits regardless. So I think there's actually a lot of categories right now that you can still get a really good value of regardless of some of the scary headlines that might be out there. Backing up and looking at a 30,000 foot uh, view here, you've talked about it a few times historically with that number uh, the dollar figure in terms of cash on the sidelines, why this market still has momentum to run now that we have a little bit more clarity on how this election might go uh, mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit more clarity in terms of uh, where cases are on the coronavirus front as we continue to await a vaccine candidate getting approved. When you look at that, 
uh, maybe what, what are some of the, the, the points that you're raising with clients saying that, look, I understand we might be near record highs in this recession, but still room to run? Yeah, that is a great point you bring up because there is still record amounts of cash sitting on the sidelines right now. And the problem is you're not getting any money by sitting in cash and keeping your money uninvested. It's this idea we call TINA, meaning there is no alternative other than stocks. You're getting no growth in cash, actually losing money with purchasing power. And it's not even just investors like you and I who have cash on the sidelines. These are big institutions who also have cash and their investors want to see a return on that. They really can't hold on to cash that longer um, and just getting simply no return. So you're going to start to see this money go into the stock markets. There's really no other place for growth. And that's a whole nother boost that the markets can see going higher.